So Yarmonix is a festival of sound and new music that we started. And actually, it started quite randomly. Uh, I was speaking to a friend, Adam Burton, who had made some music under the name Knock, and he said he wanted to, um, I don't know, perform at some point, and I sort of made a new resolution to do three live events, live music events in Yarmouth, to try and make that happen. And because of one of our, yeah, our issues of capacity, we try and collaborate with lots of other people as much as possible. So at the time we got in touch with Oliver Payne, who was running uh, Norfolk and Norwich Sonic Arts Collective. Yes. Yeah. And, and they're now to called do their Easterneer. own events called yeah. Plink Plonk. Plink Plonk, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we talked with him about doing a festival in Yama. You're very good at naming things. So you say you had nothing to do, do with it, so yeah, Yarmonix. That's, that's my, that's my was contribution, born. basically. Um, and it was really, a, I, mean, I guess, one of the surprising. So the first year, it was a, a performance on the hour, every hour in a different location. And then we had talks that year as well, didn't we? So there was a... Kickstarted with a conference yeah. uh, seminar event. And a, and a live gig, actually, in the evening. Yeah. So it sort of became a sort of a weekender. But yeah, no, it's a, for us, it's a really nice way for people to experience the town in a sort of, you know, in, you say, in a prom processional promenade way. Um, we, can, we can, one minute we're on the beach, on the jetty, and the next minute we're in the Minster, and the next minute we're in a nook and cranny underneath the shopping centre. So it's sort of listening to the place. So, you know, in terms of having like a core audience that definitely come and are interested in sounds and new music, connect in the harmony with harmony sound um, with with a sort of tertiary audience secondary audience that are just passing by and not really understanding what's going on but actually if you can do something in a very nuanced quiet way it sort of really suits other pe people who have diff totally different sensibilities around mm. how they want to engage a view from some that all audiences can handle in in a place like this is entertainment is sort of circus and yeah the lowest common denominator and it's you know it's really insulting I think it's um and Great Yarmouth has a very particular reputation locally as well especially in Norwich lots of people would not come here there are streets they wouldn't walk down you're just using one sense in a way you're just you're listening and it removes those preconceptions somehow and you sort of see things in a, in a different way beyond the event as well we've got a sound map so people can experience the performances afterwards and, and also kind of a gathering a sound archive that people can actually enter their own like li listening to Great Yarmouth clips from which then can then be used as resource for what happens in the future so it's mm. sort of it's got many layers that you can kind of interact with it not solely being there on the day. I sort of think of myself as an artist definitely think that what we do is artist-led um, yeah I guess the time to make our own things is very few and far between, but it does happen occasionally. And the production and the, yeah, those values behind production, I think, are artistic.